Dubbed the A-10 Warthog for its aggressive look and often painted with teeth on the nose cone, the A-10 Thunderbolt II is the U.S. Air Force's go-to low-altitude close-air support aircraft. The A-10 is maybe the most famous for its fearsome GAU-8 Avenger 30mm Gatling gun mounted on the nose and has been a workhorse for the U.S. Army for decades. Let's have a look at what else makes it so special. But before we get started, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more just like it, remember to give us a like and subscribe to Military World to get more sent straight to your notifications. The plane has excellent maneuverability at low air speeds and altitude, plus it's a highly accurate and survivable weapons delivery platform. Its main advantage is it's able to loiter near battle areas for extended periods of time and operate in low ceiling and visibility conditions. On top of this, the wide combat radius and short takeoff and landing capability allow operations in and out of locations near front lines. Using night vision goggles, A-10 pilots are able to carry out their missions around the clock. The A-10 Thunderbolt goes by many names. It is also known as the Warthog, the Flying Gun, and the Tank Buster. Its first ever flight was in May of 1972, and a total of 716 aircraft were produced. Its first in-flight testing began in 1974, and it was pushed to the limit in a variety of flight profiles from as high as 25,000 feet to as low as 100 feet, and from speeds ranging just under 155 miles per hour to nearly 480 miles per hour, which ranges between 250 to 773 kilometers per hour, and up to 5 Gs. The initial production of A-10 aircraft came to an end in 1984. Originally manufactured by Fairchild, since 1987, the prime contractor for the A-10 has been Northrop Grumman, which is responsible for support and structural upgrade programs from the Integrated Systems and Aerostructures Divisions at Bethpage, New York, and at St. Augustine in Florida. The Warthog has received many upgrades over the years. In 1978, the aircraft was fitted with a paved penny laser receiver pod, which sensed reflected laser radiation from a laser designator. However, this has now been discontinued and replaced with more capable advanced targeting pods. The Thunderbolt began receiving an inertial navigation system in 1980. Later, the low altitude safety and targeting enhancement upgrade gave it computerized weapon aiming equipment, an autopilot, and a ground collision warning system. Just before the millennium, the aircraft began to receive GPS navigation systems and a new multifunction display. In 2005, the entire fleet of aircraft began receiving the precision engagement upgrades that included an improved fire control system, electronic countermeasures, upgraded cockpit displays, the ability to deliver smart bombs, moving map display, hands-on throttle and stick and digital store management, amongst other improvements. One of its main features is the Gatlin gun we mentioned earlier. The seven-barreled monster was originally designed to fire upwards of 4,200 rounds per minute, but has since been reduced to a still impressively high 3,900 rounds per minute. Each of the 30mm cartridges that are spat out of the GAU-8 is larger than a typical beer bottle, and it takes two hydraulic motors to spin the barrels, all of which shake the aircraft and produce clouds of hot gas. Everything in the Thunderbolt is designed to make room for the gun including the nose landing gear, offset to the right of the aircraft so that the firing barrel lines up along the center of the airframe. Because the gun's recoil forces push the entire plane off target during strafe attacks, the gun itself is mounted laterally off-center, slightly to the port side of the fuselage center line, with the actively firing barrel in the 9 o'clock position when viewed from the front of the plane, so that the firing barrel lies directly on the aircraft's center line. The firing barrel also has a very specific position, which lies just below the aircraft's center of gravity, being boresighted along a line two degrees below the aircraft's line of flight. This placement accurately centers the recoil forces, preventing changes in the aircraft pitch or yaw when fired. In terms of bombs, the Thunderbolt can also deliver a wide variety of these. It can carry up to 10 Maverick air-to-surface missiles, these are missiles that use a variety of guidance systems, including imaging infrared guidance and warheads, which include a high-penetration, 26-pound conical-shaped charge warhead. Their range is more than 27 miles, or 45 kilometers. 
The plane can also carry the Sidewinder air-to-air -air missile, an all-aspect short-range missile with a maximum speed exceeding Mach 2. On top of this, the Warthog is capable of deploying a wide range of other weapons, like the LDGP MK82 500-pound bomb, 2,000-pound MK84 series low high-drag bombs, 500-pound general-purpose bombs, BOU-1 and BOU-27B Rock I-2 cluster bombs, cluster bomb unit CBU-5271, combined effects munitions, and mine dispensing munitions. It's also capable of releasing laser-guided, electro-optically guided bombs, infrared countermeasure flares, electronic countermeasure chaff, illumination flares, and jammer pods. On top of being lethal, the plane has also been designed to survive. It's battle-hardened to an exceptional degree, being able to survive direct hits from armor-piercing and high-explosive projectiles up to 23 millimeters. It has double redundant hydraulic flight systems and a mechanical system as backup if hydraulics are lost. The single-seat cockpit is protected by all-round armor with a titanium structure up to 3.8 centimeters thick to increase the pilot's survivability. The cockpit has a large bulletproof bubble canopy, which gives good all-around vision. The pilot can utilize a heads-up display, which is used for targeting and weapon aiming, a half-quick secure radio communication system, inertial navigation, and a tactical air navigation system. Over the years, the A-10 aircraft was upgraded with the Embedded Global Positioning System Inertial Navigation System, which pinpoints the exact location of the aircraft. For thrust, the plane has two TF-34 GE-100 non-afterburning turbofan engines, courtesy of General Electric, which supply 9,065 pounds of thrust each. The location of the engines, high on the fuselage, allows the pilot to fly the aircraft with one engine damaged. In fact, the A-10 has been designed to be able to fly with one engine, half of the tail, one elevator, and half of a wing missing. The Warthog can be serviced and operated from austere bases with limited facilities near battle areas. Many of the aircraft's parts are interchangeable left and right including the engines, main landing gear, and vertical stabilizers. The A-10 Precision Engagement Modification Program from 2006 to 2010 updated all A-10 and OA-10 aircraft in the fleet to the A-10C standard. The United States Air Force completed a project to re-wing a portion of its A-10C fleet on July 25, 2019. This project began in 2007 when Boeing received a $1.1 billion contract to provide 173 sets of wings. The new wings are expected to last for up to 10,000 equivalent flight hours without requiring a depot inspection and will permit the modified aircraft to remain in service through 2030 or beyond. Another project to provide 112 additional wing sets for the remaining A-10Cs was funded in fiscal year 2018. The service is acquiring the wing sets under the A-10 Thunderbolt Advanced Wing Continuation Kit program. A long-held ambition to re-engine the A-10s is not included in current plans. New part suppliers with modern techniques may help restore the original engine thrust of the General Electric TF-34 engines, rather than the slight detune that the aircraft currently operates with. Specifically designed for close air support, its unique combination of large and varied ordnance load, long loiter time, accurate weapons delivery, austere field capability, and survivability has been invaluable to the United States and its allies over the years. Across a career of several decades, the Thunderbolt has participated in operations Desert Storm, Southern Watch, Provide Comfort, Desert Fox, Noble Anvil, Deny Flight, Deliberate Guard, Allied Force, Enduring Freedom, and Iraqi Freedom. Together, the experience gained in the field, plus a host of capability upgrades, will keep the A-10 at the forefront of the United States Air Force Close Air Support Mission for at least another decade, and likely substantially longer. A lot will depend on whether or not the U.S. Air Force decides to mount another attack on the Thunderbolt II fleet. But with new investments being made to recapitalize the A-10 force and with reduced interest in a successor or new light attack platform, all indications are that the A-10 will not be going away anytime soon. What are your thoughts on the A-10? Let us know in the comments below.
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to Military World to get our latest videos straight to your notifications.